All right, I'll go ahead and mute myself. If you need me, let me know. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. Hello. I see some familiar faces. Hello there. We're going to start a little early today. I hope that works for everyone. Actually, we're going to start 15 minutes early, and that's fine. If you have questions, you can ask me as we go along or at the end, whichever works for you. I can see everybody's questions here. My name is Melissa Armo. Thank you so much for having me today. I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and today I'm gonna to talk about the strategy that I trade in the market. It's a day trading strategy, and I, I really focus on trading in the morning. In the first 30 minutes of the trading day between 9.30 and 10, that's the time of the day that I focus on. And if you've been thinking about day trading for a career, uh, you, you might wanna stay and listen to what I have to say tonight, or inquire more later by emailing me, because you can make substantial profits in the market but I really am very focused with what I do. Uh, today I shorted Twitter, that was the play I did today, and actually I did it and made money before that drop off in the market. I haven't looked at it recently. It probably had a bigger move than later today because the market did fall. But I mainly focus on the beginning part of the morning to make profits. And I find that a lot of day traders that trade all day, like till four o'clock, end up giving money back. And so I kind of look at what I do like a job. Once the job is done, then you stop. And if you look at a trading like a job, you'll, you'll fare better in the end because you, otherwise you tend to have this gambling mentality. And I know because I've been trading now for almost nine years. And when I first started out, I thought the harder I worked, the longer I traded, the more trades that I took, the more money I'd make. But it's not the case. It's really about the focus, getting the consistency, and then adding the size. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today, okay? So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com and you can feel free to give me a call at 929-3200 GAP and you can follow me on Facebook, YouTube, or any one of these places. So let's get going tonight. Afterwards, if you wanna ask me questions, I know Amazon's reporting. If you, if you wanna ask me questions about any stocks when we're done, I'll pull up my chart so we can go through some things if you want to say, Melissa, where is this going or whatever, okay? And I know Amazon's it's reporting tonight, like right now. <laughs> so one of the things I think that people, I talk to so many people, they, they, they know that they can make money in the market. They know that money's there, okay? But, but people start out, when they start out, they lose, okay? And then they feel down about the market or trading. So I think it's a very important to to be optimistic and positive when you choose to trade. And you will go through rough patches in your process unless you were just born and figured out how to trade immediately, but I don't know anyone that's ever done, done that. Um, and I've met a lot of people. So Napoleon Hill actually wrote a good book. Um, if you've ever had a chance to read it or you want more information about some books, most of the books that I've read really have nothing to do with trading. They were books that helped my mind. When I was going through the process and I, and I needed my own lift at the beginning when I was figuring out my system. So this is a good quote. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. So if you believe that you can make money in the market, then you've got a shot. If you don't think you can, then you absolutely will not. It does not mean that everyone that trades will. Obviously, many people won't. But if you think you can't, you definitely won't. Okay? There we go. Vastu is saying it's Think and Grow Rich is the book. Yes. Good, good book. An old book. Okay? Has really nothing to do about trading. But I find it was an important book to read when I was starting out in my trading career. So can you earn $20,000 a month in the market? And can you make a living trading? The answer is yes. You can. Okay? And can you make this kind of money in half an hour a day? Yes, why? Because the strategy that I trade has momentum and movement in that early part of the day. Now today was an unusual day in the market because there was volatility that happened later. But I, you know, I don't know what created that move today in the market. I'm sure I'll find out tonight in the news or tomorrow. But the bottom line is the volatility that happened today in the market was unusual sporadic, doesn't normally happen like that out of the blue. Usually, you get volatility momentum in stocks in the morning, and I'm gonna explain why tonight. So how can you make this kind of money, and what can you do? What's the strategy? The strategy is gaps. So here's the Twitter, okay? Twitter closed last night here, okay, this is a daily chart, 
close to your approximately 1960-ish or whatever, gap down in the morning this morning, open around 1740-ish or whatever it was, 1730-something I think it was. This is a gap. When a stock closes at one price here and opens at a different price the next day, that's a gap. So I'm playing the gap each morning on the daily chart. So what is a gap? For those of you that don't know, this is my definition. A stock gap from the closing price today is different than the opening price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break of price action from one day to the next. Stocks can gap up and stocks can gap down. ETFs can gap too. For example, the SPY okay, and the QQQs are ETFs. The U.S. market closes at 4 o'clock and it opens at 930 so there are always lots of gaps because it would be very rare that something would close at, you know, $9.12 at 4 o'clock and open the next morning at 9.30 at $9.12. Okay, that would be very, very rare. I mean, it can happen, but <clears throat> that would be considered a neutral open. However, not every gap is playable or predictable. So what I look for to trade every day is a gap that is predictable, like, I'm just gonna go back here, Twitter. Twitter was predictable to me that it would, was a short. So I shorted this in the day. It was not long, but there were people that were trying to go long it, and the reason I know that is because I was in the stock short, and at one point it had a rally push back, okay? Now here was another one today. Facebook had earnings last night. So as I said, things can gap up, stocks can gap down, here was Facebook, it gapped up. Closed last night at four o'clock, gapped up. Okay, this, this actually gapped up a lot. I watched this last night live and did a video on it when it was roughly around 168.50-ish, 169. This ended up having a huge move between last night and this morning, which I actually talked about in the video because I'm like, I'm not even gonna say what this does tomorrow because I don't know where it's gonna open because that's so far away. <laughs> it was far away. It was, you know, hours and hours from 5 o'clock at night till 9.30 this morning. The stock moved $6, more than that, in that time period, okay? And then it ended up falling on the day. So I didn't do anything with this, but I just want to point it out because this was, Facebook had a gap up. And as you see, you could not have bought it and made money there this morning. Well, yeah, either way, opening price, closing price, it, they're, they're both different. They're different. That's what I'm saying. This price here where we closed is different from this price here where we open. Or you can say it the way Robert said, the open, the close, it's different. This is a different number than this is a different number. And you also have to read candlesticks correctly because the close of a red bar is at the low of the body. The open of a red bar is at the top of the body. And this guy here, it's a green bar, a bullish bar. The open is at the bottom, close at the top. So however you want to say it, all the same thing. The open and the close are different, different prices. And you have to learn how to read candlesticks. So, you know, I, in my class, I do a very, very uh, basic review of candlesticks before we start anything in the morning. But there are a lot of books you can read candlesticks on. And I don't really call things specific names. There's fancy dancy names out there. I don't really focus on that stuff. Now let's talk about the how, what, and when. So how do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy that's profitable. If you don't have a strategy, you shouldn't be trading at all. A lot of people think that buying support and shorting resistance is a strategy. It's actually not. It's a setup the way that you could look at a chart to read levels, but it's not a strategy. So professional gaps, which is what I play, and I'm gonna explain this more in a minute, are very, very profitable because they have large momentum. Facebook, Twitter, the ones I showed you here, okay? And, and Amazon might be doing something right now, same principle, but that would be for tomorrow. So what stocks should you trade? Stocks that gap, and this is my criteria, this is my strategy, that rate and a checklist 20 points or more per the Golden Gap 26 point rating system. So what does that mean? So I created a checklist where I'm looking at every gap that I want to in the morning. I can look at shorts and longs, but I prefer to look at shorts. And then I go through my checklist and I rate the stock. If it rates 20 points or more, then I will do the gap in the direction of it, which in the case, Twitter was a gap down, which it rated 20 points, so I shorted it. So you can't take every gap in the direction of the gap, i.e. Facebook, because if that was a bullish gap up, 
And if you had gone long the stock, you would have lost money this morning. So when do you trade gaps? You trade them in the morning into the open between 9.30 and 10 when they set up. I never take anything in the post or pre-market. I, I just don't trade it in those time frames. I think it's too wild, okay? So I trade on the live, live day. So the point I'm trying to make with this, this beginning part of the lecture here is that you really only need one strategy. And a lot of people trade and they think that they're doing a strategy, but they're, but they're not. And also a lot of people don't understand the importance of having a strategy. If you want to trade and be successful and do it for a living, you've got to have something you follow every day, like a plan of action, like you would, like you're going into the office and you have meetings with people and, you know, all the things you would normally do at a regular job. A, you know, you have a system when you trade. If you want to be successful, obviously it has to work, okay? But there will not be every trade that you take working, okay? There's, you get to the point where you have to understand that if you want to do this, you will have to take some losses. We're going to review the trade stats today. I have them in the webinar. But, you know, you have to understand when you decide to do this that, that not everything will work. There is no 100%. As soon as you can wrap your head around that concept, I think you're a lot better off if you decide you want to trade for a job or for a living, okay? Uh, you know, if you're doing this just on the side or whatever, you're not 100% serious with it, you know, that's a different story. Although, to be honest with you, I think if you're even risking a dime in the market, you should be serious because it's your own hard-earned money. But if you really want to do this where it's going to actually be something that you rely on to pay bills and stuff, then you really have to look at it like a job. And you have to accept that some days you will have to take a loss, okay? Because if you don't, then you will get frustrated. You will go into that negative mindset, and then you can also get out of control and do crazy stuff. You know, if I take a trade and I take one loss, then I stop. I might take two trades in one day and take two losses and stop, but that's it. You cannot let yourself get out of control. And that's one of the benefits also of, you know, the way that I train. I'm just trading in the morning, and then I'm, then I'm done with it. And the nice thing about trading in the morning is I'm booking money so quickly that it reduces risk. For example, let's say I was in a long today. I didn't. I shorted Twitter. I told you I like to short. Anyways, what if I was in a long this afternoon or whenever that drop off happened in the market? I didn't. I didn't check the time we started to collapse. I would have been hurt. Okay. Whereas if I had gone long something in the morning that was a good bullish gap, which I did not go long this morning, but the point is, if I had, I would have been out. Something could have rally this morning, worked lovely and beautifully and fabulous, and not. You would have gotten your profits out before the collapse, okay? Usually stocks trade on their own in good quality gaps before the market situates itself for the day, which it usually doesn't do till after 10 o'clock, and that's one of the reasons that most day traders don't start trading till after 10, but I'm usually done by then, okay? Because the stocks that I'm trading are on their own. In, in other words, Twitter would have worked today whether the market rallied or fell, okay? So I'm looking for specific, specific stocks and usually one pick a day maybe two just because right now it's earning season it's busy up early then down what do you mean by that um oh amazon was amazon up and now it's down amazon made brand new all-time highs today yes it did i saw it in fact if anybody wants to look up i'm really anxious to i'm kind of excited to know if anyone wants to look up right now what's amazon doing i'd be interested to see I think that previous high was like 10, I think it was 10.75 or something close to that. I'd be interested to see where it is right now if anybody wants to tell me if it's reported yet. Anyways, a trading career is about having a certain lifestyle, okay? Part of that lifestyle is one of the most attractive things about it, not having to work in an office and not having to work 40 hours a week. So take advantage of the fact that you are at home and can do this thing and make the money quick. You make it harder for yourself if you want to sit in front of a computer for six and a half, seven hours. You, first of all, you don't need to do it, and you're going to make more money if you don't. So I, I, I just put in here the benefits of, of five reasons why it, you know, it's attractive to trade gaps. One is fast profits. The moves happen quick, and I'm going to show you those examples here tonight. Number two, another reason to trade gaps is good risk-to-reward setups. Okay, Very important as well. Number three, you get to book money early in the morning. Very, very important too, okay? Again, done and you have the day to yourself. Reason four, you get large momentum, okay? Big moves. Stocks have big moves 
If you want to hold them for a little bit longer, you can. I typically don't, but here was an example here of ANCAM. Look at it. This was yesterday. Stock closed here, gap down. So the stock closed up here around 53 something at 4 o'clock. Open the next day, boom. Down here where? 50 bucks or thereabouts. Fell all day. This is a monster move for the stock. Move more than $4 in the day. So this is momentum. You're, you get large profits when you trade momentum like this. Just reading here. Amazon's going down fast right now. Wow. Wow. 1026. It could, it could bounce around. Sometimes they go one direction and have a big move in the opposite direction. You'll have to keep me updated on that. Well, that's unexpected. I'm not in anything with that, but that's really, that's really going to pull the market down tomorrow. Wow. Look at that. So Google, Google and Amazon both gapped down on earnings this week. Oh, that's very interesting. I'll have to look at that later. Reason five to trade gaps. You can work for yourself from home. Okay. And, you know, obviously this is a huge benefit whether whether you have kids or a family or you have a signed business or you're doing other things it's really nice to be able to work from home and not to have a boss so as i was saying earlier the strategy i trade i termed the name golden gap so what is a golden gap it's a gap that moves in the direction of the gap i'm never going long down gaps and i'm not shorting up gaps either like facebook okay it's called a golden gap because it has a high odds of working in the direction of the gap on the day so we're day trading, okay? This is what I do, I day trade. And you can also use options for my method too, but I focus on the day trading. Golden gaps are created with institutional money. So professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap and they follow it through in the live day. And so that is what I focus on. In the case of a bullish gap, institutions really are buying the stock. Now, what do I mean by institutions? Hedge funds, big banks, obviously look what's happening in Amazon right now it's selling off okay institutions it, it sounds like from what somebody wrote it with it's down tonight that it's gapping down and they are dumping the stock now who knows why I don't focus on fundamentals but the point is institutions are dumping it okay Anyways, getting back to this. So in the case of a bullish gap, institutions are buying the stock, therefore the stock moves higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, institutions are selling and are shorting the stock, therefore the stock moves lower on the trading day. This is why I prefer bearish gaps, though. I do prefer to short, and I'll tell you why. Short moves, selling action happens faster than buying action. It just does. And I'm, the, I'm impatient. I like to make money quickly and fast, and it works for me. Again, market fell today. You could have taken advantage of that downward move pretty quick if you had shorted a good short, okay? Gaps that gap down have two things happening in them to create the gap. They have selling and shorting. And therefore, they have doubled the potential for a move, and it's panic, okay? There's panic going on. Now, I, I have to look at this Amazon, and, and I will when I'm done here, but, you know, I'm not sure if that gap is down is going to be the panicky. I have to look at it. But, but right now, in this moment, it's selling off. Now, here was a bullish event. This was a good one. Netflix reported and actually did great, okay? Actually gapped up. This was back on the 18th last week. Closed here the night before, 162 something on earnings. Gapped up. Rallied. Had a huge move. And not only that, followed through. Stock gapped up more than 10 points overnight. Open. Blew over 190, and this all happened in the span of about four days. So do you see here, this looks much, much different from the Facebook. You could have gone long Netflix. This was a bullish event in the chart. It got bought, although this was today's selling. Actually, it'd be interesting to see where this closed today here. Now, the bearish event, again, the biggest one this week so far of the sell-off was ACAM. Fell like a brick actually called an option and called a put in people for this too during the live day. So you could have done a put in this as well or did the day trade short. This is a bearish event. Stock had a big sell off down. As it was stated earlier, gaps are created with large institutional money. The ones at least that you want to play, okay? Because those are the ones you can predict. Those are the ones that are going to move. 
Okay, those are the ones you're gonna make a lot of money in, and there's at least one every day or more. And all you need is one trade daily. That's another reason why I think I'm successful. I'm not all over the place. I only do one strategy, I try to focus on one trade. If somebody doesn't work, I might do two. Or if I have two that are so, so, so good, that I might do two, but it's rare. So that's what's making the gap is institutional money. And professional gaps that happen, they play out in stocks and they're formed by this, this institutional money. That's the one thing that's forming them and creating them. And you have to find a way to play it. You've got to find the correct direction to play it. And then you confirm that the large money will flow with it. And then you take the trade. So I have a formula that I use to rate and qualify the gap. And this gives me the confirmation and the conviction that the large institutional money is on my side when I take the trade and then I get the push. It's very easy. If they're moving the stock, I don't have to do anything. I get in, they move it, okay? And that's how it works. Gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency. Selling action is urgent, and sometimes buying action is urgent as well, although selling action is more urgent because of the panic. Common sense, okay? Common sense, if you're long a stock, and now you're down, you were up money, and now you're down money, you're going to panic, okay? And thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. Amazon's probably a great example of this right now if it's really doing what you said. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. So one strategy is all you need to make money in the market. If you have that and something that works, you can do it for a career, you can take it serious, you can make real money, and you must be focused, and it does help to have someone that is actually calling out the trades, which I do in the live room. The trades we're gonna go over here, I call the entry, the stop, and the exit in the live room, okay? So it's, it's not impossible to trade. The thing is that there's so many things out there. I mean, people just, they don't know what to focus on. Number one, there's so many stocks. Number two, there's so many different things you can do. You can do options, you can do swing trades, you can do day trades. Uh, many, many people don't know if they should do Forex or this, I mean, I really just do this. The reason I like stocks in the US market is because it does have some amount of regulation. I feel safe for trading it, okay? I'm in and out quickly. And people have emotions around companies, more so than something like Forex, like currencies, you know? or even futures, <clears throat> you know, there's there's emotions like Amazon, oh, we love Amazon, or we don't love Amazon, or Alexa. I mean, people have, people have emotions, and those emotions play a factor in positions that people take when they have money and they want to risk it. So again, it makes sense, it makes common sense, okay? Um, I am, I am doing a actual short, which we're gonna, we're gonna show you here. I'm taking the short position, but I'm saying you could do a put. And I have an option letter that I call people to do puts or calls. If you want to, you can do both. Some people do both. I'm actually taking the equity trade though, which I will review. So anyways, just really quickly here, my system involves a checklist. And if you decided you wanted to learn my method, this is what you would come and you would learn from me. Okay, this is how I know to do stocks like Twitter and ACAM. The purpose of the checklist is to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move in the day, ideally, confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 where you take the trade and get out, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential. You, don't, you never know if something is gonna go like ACAM. Okay, you don't know that before the open. You have the targets, you can take a couple trades in it. I mean, that was one actually you could have traded all day. So let's take a look at it. We're just going to look at the morning trade here, the quick one. But this was another one. It could go more. So what happened in ACAM? Stock gap down. Here's the clock. So the close of the night before at 4, the one-minute bar is behind the clock. And here it opened. Anyways, here's the short. You short it, put the stop. It's a hard stop. You get the drop. Time of the day here is 9.30. Take it across. Time of the day here is what, 10. So this is the period that I'm looking to focus. So I wanna trade this period here. Like I said, this to continue. But there's enough money here 
for you to get in and get out and train consistently and daily in, in, in my system so that you don't have to trade all day, okay? Price of the entry of the short was 48.35. Risk was 90 cents. This is not a small stop, but ACAN is a stock that moves a lot and did have a big move. Quantity of the share size in this trade, and all of the trades here we're reviewing today are an advanced risk if you are looking to make 20 grand a month. If that's what you're trying to hit, okay, the, this is where you have to risk. You're going to have to risk at least about a thousand dollars some days 1500 on some of these trades but most of the trades here are a thousand bucks when i'm sizing myself in trades though i will also tell you this is not an exact science sometimes if the trade is 69 cents i'll use 70 if it's 82 cents i'll use 80 okay I, i'm putting my size in and i'm not doing odd lots so i'm just i need to get the trade but i put in a hard stop stop was 49.25 exit into the first drop 47 bucks went to the target. Total profit in this one, 2,700. Time and trade, 16 minutes. And this is why, you know, I love to trade gaps. Actually, the biggest trade so far this month, when we got through the stops, we'll look at it, was IBM. Huge trade for me, over four grand. And, and, and I mean, it was, in, it was in minutes. I mean, this is, this is why tra trading for a career is, is outstanding but you definitely have to know what to do. Anyways, here was a short again. There is a stop. Get the drop, okay? Now let me look at questions. Oh no, that's it, I'm caught up. <clears throat> so you could have done this as a put, or you could have just taken the straight out equity trade. So do you see what I'm talking about about fast? It sold off. Whether you held it for five minutes or 15 minutes, that's quick, okay? It's, again, selling action, selling, selling, selling. You're selling into it. Now, the same day, there was another good one in F, okay? Guess what? Gap down, had earnings, whatever happened with it, who knows? It did not react well. Stock closed here, gap down. This is a daily chart of F. Here you go. So I got in this very quickly. Perfect entry. Let's look at it. Stock closed the night before here, gap down. I don't think this was the open. I know this bar is here, but I was watching it live, so I hesitated slightly because I wanted to wait. Anyways, this was the volume bar. Boom. Then I did it, put the stop, got the drop. Again, do you see the sell-off? See how I'm capturing the move? I'm in it. I mean, it wasn't it. <laughs> Entry 1110, stop 1120, risk 10 cents. Share size, this was a big one, but it was a cheap stock, 10,000 shares. Exit 1096. I should have gone back and looked at what this did today too, actually. Anyways, nice move. Again, this isn't, this isn't like even a big move, but look at the money you can make. If your goal is $1,000 a day, goes into the first target, you're up. More than that, get out. No piggy targets, I say. Something like ACAM, you could have done another trade if you wanted to, okay? When you're doing this for a job and it goes to the target and you're up, bunny, you take it. Again, less than 15 minutes, and I'm focusing here. Here we are, the same period. Uh, four close today, 11, 9, 19, okay. Somebody's asking a question here. However, I found that the market maker will not let you get out of put trades if you buy if you buy chance trend changes until they get their price according to the algo they have. I don't know what you're talking about because I've never had a problem exiting any trade that I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> to be honest with you. Any option trade or not. Now in an option trade, I don't know what options you're doing, okay? I'm not calling options in, you know, ABC stocks. I'm calling options in things that I know have volume in the options, okay? Google, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix. ACAM was rare, but I called it and it worked. It was a good price and I saw where it was going. So, you know, you do have to look at the ones that you're actually trading. They gotta have volume, they gotta move, 
But when you're doing an option, it's different than when I do the day trades because you do have to put an order out. You have to put an order out between the bid and the ask, and then you got to get filled. So CMG, there was another good put I called. Again, you know, volume. But this, when I day trade, I go boom, and I press it with a hotkey, and then I manually put the stop. When you do an option, you have to put an order out. you got to get filled, yes. But I've never, 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 never had a problem getting filled. And if you're having a problem getting filled, then you put it out, depending on if you're in it long or short, put it out the ask or the bid. Get You can get out. Just put the order where you need to to get out. I've never heard of anybody that said they can't get out. I don't know. you got to change brokers then or something. Something doesn't sound right with that or your platform or something, Mr. Patel. Something there sounds not kosher. Mm -mm, that's not right. I've never heard of that before in my life, actually. All right, so this was a good one. You better talk to your broker about that. Something's not right. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that, and you can do this, okay, but you have to have a structure, and the idea of making, you know, money, whether it's money on the side, doing this part-time, you know, you don't have to do this and nothing else because of the time that it takes to do this. You could be done quickly in the morning. If you want to do this and nothing else, though, you can, okay? Many, many people are not retiring at the expectation of the ages that they used to in the past. People used to retire early. Uh, companies used to offer early retirement to people. They don't do that anymore. Uh, now people are not even retiring at 65. They're still working. They need to. Not because they want to, but because they need to. The one nice thing about trading, and if you learn early enough, is that you can save for your retirement. And also, you'll be able to read charts of things of stocks you're in in your own 401ks. If you're invested in stuff, you will be able to look at charts and read of the stuff that the companies that you're in are investing you in if it's good or bad. I mean, you need to know where they're putting your money as well. Once you learn how to read a chart, you'll understand that a lot. So it's important to have a plan of action if you want to day trade and be successful. So how much do you need to risk? And I was talking about this earlier. If you want to make 20 grand a month, you're going to have to risk about $1,000 a trade. And give or take, because some trains I'm trying to get in, I might risk a little less, some is more, okay? But this is where you're going to have to be to hit the number. Once you're experienced, if you cannot, you know, afford to risk this, you can get to that point over time. Start small then. Risk 100 bucks. Work up to it. You will get there. If you're profitable, you can build your account. R start out risking 250 okay? All the numbers I showed you here today... Just divide it by two or four if you can't risk a thousand. Either way, the point is that it's profit. And since many day traders are losing, it makes sense to do something that works. And there's a lot of common sense with the strategy I trade. Looking at institutions that are moving stocks, looking for stuff that has volatility momentum, getting in and getting out quickly, taking your money and running, stopping when you're up, not trading all day. I mean, you know, doing something that has nothing to do with the market because the market can be tricky too. Now, I was showing you amounts, and like I said, you need to risk a thousand bucks. And what is this? It's called an R unit. This is not something I created, but it is a terminology that a lot of traders use. So I'm going to review it for you here today. It is important for you to do well to have the same risk unit in every trade you take. Now, why? Because what if you take five trades? Let's say you take five trades, four work, and one loses. If you risk a different amount of money on all five trades, your results, you might actually be down money. And this is a common error the traders make too. So you have to risk the same or close to it, okay? A risk unit is the amount of money you're risking per trade in dollars and cents. It's not share quantity. So many people want to say, well, I normally take 1,500 shares. You can't take 1,500 shares of everything. If you take 1,500 shares of something that stops a buck and you risk 1,500, you may not have wanted to do that if your normal risk is 250. So you can't go by the quantity. It's based on the difference between the entry and the stop. So for example, Ford was a baby stop, which was 10 cents. You short it at 10, put the stop. At 20, that's 10 cents. So in that case, if you had taken 1,000 shares, you would have only risked 100 bucks. In other trades that I've called and taken, the stop might be 50 cents, and then a share of 1,000 shares would be $500. So you got to get the dollars and cents, the risk unit, right, because the entrance of every trade will be different, because the stop will be different, because the way the stock sets up will be different. And this, again, is a benefit of being in the trading room with me, but 
you know, you learn the entries in my class, but not everything sets up the same. And I don't even know how it's going to set up until the day opens. Okay. So a risk unit should be sized according to the size of your cash balance in your account and your buying power. And if you're not sure, you can ask me specifically. You can email me. Your buying power is the total amount of margin your broker gives you based on the size of your account. Okay, so it's buying power leverage. So say you want to train. You don't need $48,000 in change to do ACAM, 1,000 shares of it in cash because you have buying power or you trade on margin. There's different types of accounts. Prop accounts have different requirements and retail accounts, okay? They all have different, you know, amounts that you have to put in, a, a margin requirements. You got to talk to the specific companies and brokers. You should allow yourself at least two trades per day. Please, please, please. I think one trade a day is not enough because you might want to take something twice. Um, do you want to close a trade after 30 minutes if it hasn't moved that much? Not if it still looks fine, no. No, there's times that I'll wait something out, unless I have to leave or go somewhere. No, I just, I go with it. I really play it out. I play it out. It's like once I'm, I'm in it, I have the conviction, I take the trade. The only reason I would kill something midstream for some reason if I was down is, I don't know, like something like today. <clears throat> Actually today, something like today. For some reason I was in a trade in the morning and the market did something like today and I was in a long and it did something crazy then I might kill the trade. I can't tell you the last time it's happened because it's so rare anyways, but I can't even think of the last time I've done that, but I'm not saying I'll never do that because something like today, if you see a, a huge reaction in something that would happen, it will affect everything in the market. And if you were in a long today, like I said earlier, you were affected by that. In fact, it would be interesting to see tomorrow the stuff that held uh, strong with the, with the, with the fall, but I, I, I doubt it. I doubt much did actually. <clears throat> actually, if anybody knows the reason we sold off, put it in the room too. I don't know if it was news or somebody talking or whatever. Anyways, your goal is to make a minimum of one risk unit. You want to make more, but that's your goal to hit your money that you're trying to make to, to do this for a job as a career, if that's what you want. <clears throat> so no, and so let's just say if you're up in a trade and you're up 1500 bucks and your goal is $1,000 a day. If you're trying to make more and you think it's going to go and it has a bigger target and everything looks good, no, if you hold it to try to make more over two grand or whatever, it could come back. It could push back up against you, and then you may not even be up to 1,000, which is your goal. So all of this has to do, again, with you having the right mindset and a plan of action to trade so that you make sure you do achieve your goal each day. You will be profitable by balancing risk to reward along with the high win ratio. So my system has a high win ratio, but this is you balance that with the risk to reward. It's one of the best reasons to learn my system is because it does have a high risk to uh, uh, win ratio, which helps with the consistency, meaning if you take 10 trades, about eight of those 10 trades with me should be profitable and two will be losers, okay? So that gives you some kind of an idea. You have to accept the fact, as I said earlier, some will be losers, but you should not have that many losers. You should have each week, actually, that you trade should be profitable. Otherwise, how are you doing it? You know, how are you ever going to hit your numbers? People that are way, have huge trades up and then huge days down, it's a nightmare for your emotions and it's just not healthy, period. Okay, so it's best to be consistent. A thousand, a thousand, nine hundred, you know, just chunk it out. So anyways, if you want to hit this goal, you've really got to risk a thousand bucks in our unit. And, you know, I focus on trading between 9.30 and 10 and you stop when you're up. Okay, that means you don't take any more trades. If, unless something like ACAM. ACAM really, I mean, it, it was just, it just collapsed. It was going to go to zero if it, it would have, if it would have been past four o'clock. But that's rare, okay? If you look at trading like a job, then it will be one for you. But if you look at trading like gambling, then that's what it's going to be, okay? I look at trading like a job when I'm done and you book it. You just make it, book it, stop, and you stop and you shut it down, okay? So here was the F again. Uh, any questions so far as we're going along here? I think we will have time to look at Amazon tonight. I only have a few more things I want to show you the stats. So how do you achieve the income you dream of? You, you, you've got to have a method and way to do it. So here is July. So I have all the trades in here from July. I took off the beginning of July for the holiday for the July 4th. And when the market is not busy, you should not really be trading. So I 
have the stats here from back from 710. ANF was a short, Coors was a short, 712 no trade. So it might be days where you don't have any trades that meet right through criteria. STX 700 bucks, 14th was two losers. Banks didn't work out. 717 no trade, 719 hog was a good short, 1650. IBM was the big day on the 19th short again. Qcom was a short. G was a loser. Didn't work out. That was last Friday. HIP was a short on Monday. STX was a loser. Mu was a winner this week. And then yesterday was the F and the A cam. Today, Twitter. And I don't know what we'll get tomorrow. So in July, there were 15 trades, okay? Four losers and 11 winners. So you see how you can pull money, you chunk it out. Even this period here, this was a crappy day for me. And it was, it was a Friday, which was even crappier. But I pulled it right around the next week. And actually two days later I had IBM, so look at that. So, you know, again, I have conviction in my system, but I've been doing it for so long. So just in this two week period, you know, not including tomorrow, you could be up over 14 grand, but you have to risk a thousand bucks a trade. If you can't, and you could only risk 500, then you'd be up 7,000. This is, these are, this is real. I mean, there's people in my room that are doing well, not just me. No, they're, they're day trades. These are, these are day trades. I didn't do anything with FB. I didn't touch it. Why? Does anyone want to know? Let's see if people are listening to me. Why didn't I do Facebook today? Go. Anyone. I'm quizzing you. No, that's because it was, I did not do it because of earnings. No. I don't know what time you stopped in, Mike, but I was talking about it earlier. Why didn't I do Facebook? Robert said hi. No. Steven said against the trend, no. John Gustafon got it right. I don't know who he is. It gapped up. In fact, hold on. Let's see if I can just... Here, can you see my chart? I don't know what shows and what doesn't show. Can you actually see my chart here? This doesn't look that bad, people. It's just... This isn't collapsing through the floor of the earth. All right, here. No, because it's gapped up. Let me put this stuff on here. So, it, because it gapped up. John got it. He gets a gold star. There you go. I did not short Facebook because it gapped up. But I didn't go long it. But I didn't short it. I had nothing to do with a trend or anything else. I don't short bullish gaps. And I don't go long bearish gaps. And, and that is another reason, actually, since, since you people brought it up. I mean, it's so rare I get asked this, but that's another reason I'm successful. Because I because my mind is trained, my mind is trained to do one thing. And then I just do it. And that's how I can see something and say, here, this is going to go. That's how I can look at Twitter and say, boom, it's gonna, it, we short it and we do it. That's how I can see something and see it clearer than a lot of people. I mean, it's the truth. Because I'm not doing what you just said. And so therefore, my brain just, it's just instinct. I'm just, my brain is trained. It's almost like in the process of me looking at something. And so many people want to analyze everything. People use, look at my charts. They're, they're so clean. I don't have a million things on here. I don't have 100 trend lines. I don't have all Fibonacci's. I don't have, I mean, this is my brain is just trained to so clearly read the price and predict it. So I, people try, they analyze, they spend so much time, where is this going to go? I don't, I don't. I just read it and then I know. And I've trained my brain so well that on the live day, I can see the trades setting up so quickly because I'm, I'm doing the same thing over and 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 over again. I'm not doing anything different. I'm doing the same thing and I've trained my brain to do it. So in the time that the trade is setting up, I'm just doing it. And I just, it's just like a flow. I'm not overthinking it, but I have a process that I do in the pre-market. I mean, I'm not trading on the fly. I know that I like Twitter before 9.30, before the open, but I, but but I'm telling you the fact that I don't do that, that I don't flip things, is so 
critical actually and it is one of the reasons I'm successful too because I've trained my brain your brain it's like when you ride a bike or you do a sport or you play the piano or something anything anything you can do that's a skill trading is a skill yes there now I've told you now you can go home and go to bed tonight you learn something new this was worth coming here today and staying late trading is a skill and you must master that skill and if you don't master that skill you will never be good so you have to go and learn how to trade from the market for someone that has a good skill set. And if they don't, then, then it's worthless. They can teach you everything about a chart and candlesticks and moving averages and everything in the world. Trend lines, all of it. They can even teach you a system, but you, you, it's a skill. I mean, it, it just is. It's a skill. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at, 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 at the number of years I've been trading and how my own skill has increased. And so what you have to look forward to is that you act, if you actually do learn how to trade you will you will make more money over the course of your life over time and your skill set will be better and that's how it really should be anyways except for people don't stick with one thing one of the one of the other things is people jump around i've not jumped around i've stuck with gaps i've really stuck with shorts for the most part too one of the reasons i've called the market higher i'm incorrect on that as well is because of the fact that i can read weakness and i don't see it in the market and i haven't seen it in the market so you know when you learn how to read one directional bias well too, then you'll know how to read the other one. Because you'll know when something's actually strong. You'll say, whoop, this is too strong for me to short. And I'm not going to short this today. Now that wasn't the case here. I mean, this thing just, you know, it was just, it was a lot better last night. I liked it last night. But then this morning, eh, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't even watch it, to be honest with you, because I wanted to do Twitter. So then I didn't bother with this thing. Um, trading off a 15 minute, you can if you want to, but then you're trading later. And I wouldn't do that unless you're up money in the morning from the morning anyways. When do I start evaluating the gap trade? As soon as I roll out of bed, you could do it tonight. We could rate Amazon here, except for there's no way I'm shorting this because I'm not going to day trade Amazon. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I might do a put in this, but I, but I tell you right now, this is a 1022. This will not be a 1022 tomorrow morning at 930 or at 7 a.m. <laughs> I don't know where this will be, but it could be at it could be at 950. It could, it could be at 1075. I mean, <laughs> this stock here. What was the low? Let's look at it. This is in the post market, and then we'll click it back to the PowerPoint. 1001. Here, let's look at it. Where did that go? 1001 and eight cents. <laughs> Wouldn't you have lived to buy that there? <laughs> you would have had an order just sitting there. Here, let's look at it like nothing for the stock too. I mean, it's fun to think of the numbers. I mean, today, actually, let's see, the high today was 1083. I thought it was 1075. 1083. So in the post market tonight, it <laughs> collapsed 80 some dollars. But it's like nothing. And that's what's so hilarious. All right, let me go back to the webinar. <laughs> All right, the point is, the sky is the limit once you get good. There you go. Okay, I've said it all right that. If you want to do this and do well, the sky's the limit. You could do swing trades with my method. You could do day trades. You could do the options, everything. But you, you know, you got to get good at it. So whatever your dreams are, if you want to do this just because you want more free time or maybe you want to make more money. To me, trading really is a lifestyle choice because the idea of not having to sit and work all day, <coughs> excuse me, for eight hours is, is just as attractive as the money. And it's the amount of the money and the time it's the idea of being able to make, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars in fifteen minutes. You know, I never, I never did that in my mortgage job. I would work on a loan for three months and <laughs> make four grand. So it's quite, quite different for me now. So whatever the reason is, some people, you know, want to trade because they just want to have a better lifestyle, buy nice stuff, and that's fun too. But it's the quality of life. I think as you get older, you realize you don't want to, you don't want the stress, and you don't want to work so hard. So if you're thinking about doing this and you're a beginner, where would you start? First thing would be to take my class. You take the Golden Gap course. Then you learn how to rate gaps and practice taking the entries on a demo. Do it for a week. It's not that big of a deal. Just get used to it. You don't want to do a fat finger trade. And then you can get a live account. And then you take small risk. Do that for a couple of weeks if you need to. One week, maybe a month. Then you can step it up, 100 bucks. Okay, all on the while you're getting live experience, which is good too. And then you could increase it to, you know, 150, 200 until you get to the point where you're risking, you know, $500 and then you can bump it up to 1000 And this is, I think, a good 
way for people to start. You've got to start somewhere. You can't, you know, you can't just say I'm going to make X, Y, Z and you've been losing for years. Give yourself a chance to ease into it. You've got to make three grand a month before you can make six. You know, you've got to make six grand a month before you can make ten. So even if you've got the money in account to risk this, I'm telling you, you want to make sure that you've got the skill set down. Because you don't want to do something dumb and then lose money just because you made a mistake because you were just learning. Okay. Um, I evaluate the gap as early as I get up. So between 7, 7.30. <clears throat> I, I usually don't look at stuff at night because I'm tired. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's nothing really walk through with Facebook. I could just tell that, you know, it didn't look as good as it did last night. But really, it would be, I would watch it on the open if I really wanted to do it. We can pull up the one-minute chart of Facebook, but I don't think that ever set up as a long. I, I don't think it actually even sucked anybody in. I'll, go, I'll look at it, though, when we're done here, the one-minute chart. I don't think there was any entry in that to go long, okay? Not that Facebook isn't higher, but it wasn't today and, and not right now, and certainly not, not it with Amazon down tonight. Anyways, the, the, what I focus on is charts. I mean, that's what I've been talking about. And I do get excited when I see stuff like that. It's the price. It's the price. It's the price. It's the price. What is something worth? How much someone's willing to pay for it? Okay, and if no one wants something, then you're gonna have a hard time selling it, and therefore they're gonna lower the price. Okay, something is only worth what people are want, want to pay for it. This is why I don't focus on the fundamentals. Okay, I'm reading the price. We all, it's right there. Okay, it's not. We don't have to go somewhere and find it. We all have charts. We all have live data. You look on your level two. Boom. You see Amazon live tonight. Okay, it's not like you have to analyze data or somebody saying, well, this was a good report. This is a bad report. Actually, someone look up. Look it up right now. See if Amazon's report was bad. I mean, who knows? I'm just saying it's never actually that what you think. You have to look at the chart and that's how you're going to be able to predict what to do. I'd be interested to see if someone wants to look that up as well. Anyways, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches... A 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. I usually do one, but you could do two. And sometimes I do do two, but I try to focus on one. I'll try to do one thing tomorrow. I don't know what it'll be. How do you play it on the day is important. One-minute chart. That's how I'm doing it. Get in, get out. Between 9.30 and 10. If I'm still in it and it hasn't dropped, I will stay with it, though. Okay. I do have uh, videos of the live trading room. If you want to go to my YouTube, Stock Switch on YouTube. In fact, I have today's room on there and a bunch of other things too. You can watch them. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on a very advanced level, and that is important. It's important because that's how you're going to learn how to make money. Okay? That's how you're going to learn how to predict it. <clears throat> and you've got to get your trades in the right direction. If you take a trade and you are, for example, if you were long Facebook today, you lost money. Okay? It just, it just didn't, didn't, didn't do the right thing. But I do believe Facebook is higher in the long term, okay? But it probably isn't tomorrow with Amazon gapping down either. So focus, focus, focus. If you want to do this for a job, it's very, very important to do this. So my checklist is how I know what to do, like, for example, the Twitter. How, how to trade it, what to do where the targets are, where's the support, where's the resistance. So in that morning period, I am extremely focused when I do my ratings. You should give yourself at least a half an hour. You don't have to start rating at, you know, 7.30 in the morning like I do. But you've but you got to give yourself at least 30 minutes to prep. I'd say an hour. The longer you prep in the morning, the better you're going to be on the live day, okay? And probably the more money you're going to make because you're going to, you know, you're going to see things. Like, I'll look at Twitter, and then I'll look at something else, and I'll rate it, and I'll scan, and then I'll look at the market. It's it's not like I'm just I'm sitting there staring. I'm looking at other stuff, and then I go back. The price is moving. Okay, all this is happening in live, live time, all right? But ultimately, day trading is about consistently booking money, and that's what you want to do. Any questions here? I actually put all the trade room calls all the way back from May. Well, not all the way back from May, but May 18th in here. Then it was off again for the Memorial Day holiday. Here's, again, all the winners, a couple days it didn't trade. One loser in here was EXPR. 
June was a really good month. Pay was a, did two trades in pay. One was a loser. One was a winner. Pay was a really I mean uh, June was a really good month. Then Adobe was a loser. Oracle was a loser. BBBY was another big trade. Okay. And did BBBY twice here. AL, ALDR, one loser, one winner. PayX was a winner. Fred, Nike, and again, most of these are shorts. It was only a couple longs. Off for the July 4th holiday, and then here's the results I already showed you for these. So bottom line is, since the last period, we were 41 calls uh, since that I called in here, not including obviously the vacation time. 41 calls, nine losers, 32 winners. So that's a 78% win ratio. Okay, that's a profitable system. And you, you know, you want, you, you have to just accept the fact that you can do it if you focus, but so many people don't. And it doesn't mean that you're never going to take a loss, but you can't let the one loss ruin your week. And that's what people do. They either don't trade the next day because they're upset, take a chintzy, chintzy uh, profit the next day because they took a loss to one day or they lose, you know, do and trade to four o'clock the day they start the day out bad. I mean, you know, you just got to have some self-control and you have the conviction in the system itself, if you at least if you come with me, that you know that we'll get it tomorrow. We'll, we'll get another day, you know. Um, I do not have separate membership for the training room without having done my class. Good question. If you do my Golden Gap course, then you're eligible to join the training room, which is a separate fee of $350 a month after the class. I do not have trading room membership alone without the class. And one of the reasons is that I really want people in the room that are committed to trading and therefore they need to learn it. And you have to understand you're risking your own money you know, when you're taking the trades. You need to understand why Twitter is a short, which you will learn in the class. And also, what are you gonna do if I ever stop teaching or running the room? You, you, what would you do without me? You need to know how to do it for the rest of your life for yourself. Are your gap trades based on your earnings announcements? Some are, some aren't. It just so happens that a lot of earnings do gap, Robert. So, bottom line is, some are, some aren't. Um, no, 41 trades since May 18th here. Somewhere on YouTube, you can go if you want to. Look, I do have the trade room tracking since January. Just haven't put it together in one long video. I do have the previous trades in a trade tracking video somewhere on YouTube. I've got like 2,000 videos on YouTube. I will probably at some point, if I have time... <laughs> Um, do a whole thing to catch up. But there's one video that has all since the beginning of the year, and then I've been tracking these now in their most recent webinars back since May. But it's on it's on YouTube actually. And actually, I put the I put the room on YouTube a lot. It's after the fact, uh, but I you know I, I taped the room in the morning a lot. Anyway, so this was you know 38 grand in the span of this period for two months, and then there was a vacation period where I took off for two weeks for July 4th and Memorial Day. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I just, I, I'm not sure what to say to people. We're talking about this in the training room this morning. As I understand where people are coming from, that they, A, have lost money in the market, and B, maybe have done classes or learned things that didn't work. I get that. Not everything works. Not everything does work, but some things do. So, you know. You know, you've got to decide if what I said makes sense to you because what I do works. Whether you think it does or not, you'd have to take a chance and take my class to find out. So, you know, I think I, I get where people are coming from. I probably got lucky because I only ever did one class in my whole life, a trading class, and then I just started trading live. And the funny thing is that I really thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't, <laughs> but I thought that I did. And then I started losing after that class. Um, but I did throw myself full throttle into the market and trading. And then I lost my own money while I figured out the system that I, that I started. And it took me three years. So it took me about three years to figure out all the points and how to do everything. But, you know, it was worth it. But, it, you know, I would, I would never want to go back to that time in my life because you're doing it and you just don't know if you're going to figure something out yourself. I mean, it would have been easier for me to take a class and learn from someone, 
but there's just not that much out there about gaps. I got to be honest with you. And, and the stuff that's out there really is n not correct. So I ended up inventing my own method. There are other things you can do. You don't have to trade gaps. But I'm telling you, if you like the idea of trading fast in the morning, which was the whole point in the webinar, and also being able to do it where you make substantial money enough to support yourself, that you know gaps are it. It depends on if you like what I said. It depends on your personality, where you are. If you can commit to that time in the morning, you do have to be in front of the computer. Uh, you have to be able to trade between 9.30 and 10 and take the trades. So the Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. This is a class that I'm teaching it this weekend. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So if you take my class, you will learn how to trade gaps. You will learn a strategy you can use to make money in the U.S. stock market, and you absolutely will. Um, you will learn a strategy that offers momentum in stocks and finding them each day. You will learn how to read a chart. You will learn about technical analysis. And even if you think you have a good grasp on that now, you will have a better grasp on that after my class. Uh, you will learn a strategy that is profitable in multiple time frames. although I focus on the one minute chart. You will learn how to read stock charts and price patterns. You will learn to pick which symbol to trade on the day and you will learn how to enter the stock and determine the targets. It's very important to focus on one strategy. You've got to gain the skill, which is really the technical part of it. And, and, and what I do is I predict where somebody's going to go before it happens, because that's how you make money. You don't make money doing it after the fact. I could never have predicted that Amazon would gap down tonight, but tomorrow morning I will be able to predict where it's going to go once I see it in the pre-market. So I'm not predicting the gap until it happens, but after it does, then I do. And that's what my method does. That's what the points do, and that's what you learn in the class. Anyways, here's me. I'm a trader. Um, the Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to train. And if you'd like more information, you can email me on it. The class is online. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Now, the class is this weekend. I know we're doing the webinar here, and it's only one day to make a decision, and it's late. But if you want to do the class, it's $49.99. It's $4,999. It's 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. If you want to sign up, Email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You'd have to do it tonight or tomorrow. Now, the trends class this is something where I look for long-term trends and swing trades. It's next week, August 1st and 2nd, 11 to 3. And if you want to do both, you save half in the trends class. You'd save $500 for $54.99. Now, I'm doing just, just for the people here for this webinar, for the Trader Talk Live, I'm doing a special... If you're here tonight and you want to do the class Saturday and Sunday, you could get the trading room free for the rest of the year. If you sign up, you got to sign up by tomorrow. So that's it. Tomorrow's the deadline. No exceptions. You'd have to sign up tonight or tomorrow. You would get the trading room free the rest of the year. This is absolutely so worth it. Then you would do the class this weekend and be in the room and get my live calls. And it's been a great year. I mean, you know, people are happy. My students are happy. My clients are happy. Everyone's happy. You know, and, and I just got to keep chunking it out myself, seeing things clearly, staying disciplined. I mean, this is part of the game. Every day is new. I don't know what we'll get tomorrow. You know, I get up early in the morning, work out. Then I come back, I scan, train, and do stuff for the business or do stuff in New York. I mean, it's, it's really actually a nice lifestyle. But, you know, you absolutely have to get to that point where you're willing to commit yourself to spending five grand if you want to learn with me. But I'm giving the trading room free to the end of the year, which is a really, really nice deal. Um, okay, here we are. Uh, do you need a level two? Yes, you will need a level two. You will need live charts in level two. You'll need to be able to put orders in and you'll have to be able to, you know, get into the stock with orders and see the ask and the bid. But I look at the chart when I'm making the training decisions, but the level two you will need, yes. Anyways, any other questions? Thanks for coming, everybody. This is really nice. You can make money in the market. Half the year is over. Can you believe it? Six months till Christmas. Less than that, because the 25th was two days ago. Anyways, take the leap into the market and your future. Does anyone have any questions? We already looked at Amazon, and I think it might look different tomorrow. Did anyone look up why what happened there with the earnings? I'd be interested. I'll have to, I'll have to put on uh, Fox Business Network here when I'm done with the webinar watch. Everybody will be talking about it. I'm sure it's only, I'm sure Bloomberg, they're all, CNBC, they're all be talking about Amazon. I'm super good. Thank you, Ben. I never saw you before. I don't know who you are, but thank you. Earnings were short. 
Dang it. Buying that Whole Foods didn't do anything for him, did it? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Love my presentation. Thank you, Eva. My monthly fee of the training room is $350, but I'm saying you can't join it till after you do the class. That's why this is a deal here. If you want to be in the room, I'm saying do the class. You get the room free to the end of the calendar year. It's six months in the room free. And you just take my calls. But you can't join the room separate. That was a, I'll just tell you a really, really quick story here. Um, actually, Wayne, are you here right now? Wayne is a, a member of the letter, of the options letter. Wayne has not done the class. Okay, Wayne does not day trade, but Wayne is on the option letter. And every time I call an option trade, Wayne emails me asking me what's the target, what's this, what's the, I mean, he asked me a lot of questions. And, and, it, and it's made me realize that I do not want to have to have the option letter have a prerequisite for the class for that. That's, that is a separate annual subscription. But I, I, I'm learning a lot from you people. I, I, there's an assumption on my part, I think, when I started the business. And, and, I, and I, I've learned so much, really, in the last 12 to 18 months. That, that I'm, people don't know as much as, as they think that they do. And I'm realizing that now as my business is growing. So it's helping me teach people better. It's helping me reach people more. I'm, I'm trying to listen more to people. Trust me when I say it's to your benefit that I, that I have this, this rule. And when I, started the, when I started the business for about the first month, and then, I, and then I know we're going over here, and I'll quick be done with this then. The first month there was a guy that was in the room and I didn't have this rule. The first, first month, he didn't put a stop in. He ended up losing a thousand bucks. He didn't put a stop. He didn't do the class. And I said, that's it. And the trade didn't work. It really didn't work. But he didn't put a stop in. And he didn't want to lose $1,000. But he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't do the class. So I said, that's it. And then I made the rule, and I've never looked back. It's for your own protection. These trades set up on a one-minute chart. They're going very quickly. You must know what to do. And that's what you learn in the class. So, and, and I think that people should be committed anyways. And $5,000 is a lot of money, but if you're in the room with me, you should be able to do the trades and make it back. But you gotta learn how to do it. Anyways, I, I, I'm learning more about people. I, I, teaching adults, uh, it, it's challenging. It, it's very challenging. I'm teaching adults, and a lot of these adults that I'm teaching have, have, have conditioned in their mind how to read charts in a way, and, and to be honest with you, I've gotta tell you, it's not accurate. So, you know, you, you have to come to me with an open mind. I will teach you what to do, but you kind of have to trust me. You have to trust and I know what I'm doing. But I think when you're in the room, you see that I do, and then it becomes very clear. And also in the class, the class is so intense, it's worth $5,000. And then I think people are like, woo, and then they see things differently and they get excited. And it, and it kind of, you know, breaks the pattern of thinking that all traders are losers. All traders are not losers. That's not true. There are a lot that are. And that's another topic for another lecture to say why do people lose and why are there so many losers but bottom line is you know you have to decide what side you want to be on you want to be on the side of the winners or you want to be on the side of the losers you know I'm telling you if you want to be on the side of the winners and you have to trade with people that are in the market that are moving the money and those are the rich people the funds the hedge funds the banks you've got to be with those people and you should not be against them and that's again why I don't flip things around all right great great thing tonight <laughs> I mean a presentation lecture listen I, we're way over email me some people are asking questions email me at melissa at the you can come tomorrow morning for a trial to the room if you want for one day this offer is good for the class this weekend through tomorrow if you have extra questions here we're over just email me melissa at the right there it's only five o'clock here I'll email you back tonight okay thanks so much for having me